shit, it's not over. I thought it was. I'm trying to wrap it up again. Because you you paint. I'm like, fuck it, it's over. Welcome back, everybody. Uh, So we are reviewing Marriage Story today. We hadn't uh, told you what film we'd be reviewing from the last episode. And uh, it it was actually my pick. So it was up to me to choose the film we were going to review. And I was struggling. And then my brother recommended Marriage Story. And uh, more often than not, my brother's my brother and I, we agree on movies, generally a good movie, bad movie. And we differ on how good or how bad. And he, he, he really screwed the pooch on this one. He recommended Marriage Story. and <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> no, you're fine. You're fine. He, he, said it, he said it was a good film. And uh, it, it, I mean, look, look, I don't want to trash it because there were good elements. But uh, I, it was a bad film, in my opinion. It was, uh, I mean, I don't know if you want me to, to, to get into it or if you want to give your notes first, but. Um, I'll, I'll give, I'll give my notes because I think I have very few notes. Okay. Um, actually, I'm, I walked away from the movie confused about how I should feel about it. So I think in some, I mean, in some areas or in some places, it might be considered as a good thing. Like, oh, a movie that leaves you feeling something. That's that's a great thing, right? You know, that's maybe that's what... Depends uh, on what you're feeling. Yeah, maybe that's... I, I don't. By the know, way, sorry I mean, for that noise. My dog just came into the room. Oh, it's okay. The, the, I think your dog is already a part of this, yeah, you know, she's, this she's, team. She needs a credit on the show. podcast. <laughs> I, exactly. But yeah, um, so I started out watching, I mean, I guess it's best if I describe my journey with the movie. Yeah, sure, go for it. A couple of minutes into the movie, I asked myself, what the fuck? Like, uh, is this what I have to put up with for the next how many hours? Because it just felt like a like a lifetime movie in a sense, but just with a really good cast, like an A, like, you know, it's a, 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 a cast of A-list actors. Um, I mean, the actors, actors too, was, like not just talented. star power. They were, they were very, very good at what they were doing. I mean, I, I, I've, I haven't really, I, I, I would say I haven't really paid attention to Adam Driver. Um, right. I mean, of course, we know Scarlett Johansson is pretty good. And of course, you know, the supporting cast. But I mean, both of them did, a, I thought, an excellent job in this movie. But the first, like about 30 minutes into the movie, I didn't care. I just wanted it to be over with. And the only reason why I stayed past that point was because you had asked me to watch it. And I felt like this was my penance yeah. for the two movies that I recommended previously, Platform and what the hell was the other one? Uh, let's see, it was Platform and Jesus, uh, Midsummer? No, it was, Mid- wasn't Midsummer. Yeah, it was Midsummer. It was, it was. Midsummer. Oh, okay. It was Midsummer. Um, hey man, look, I can all, all I'll say is Everything you've said up to this point, I agree with 100%. About 30 minutes into the film, I wanted to tap out. I was like, God damn it, but I can't because then I'm going to have nothing to say on the podcast and the king's going to be pissed and I can't review a film that I didn't watch to the end. Oh, God <laughs> damn, was it a struggle. Yeah, and then afterwards, it started to pick up for me. Um, and maybe that's more for personal reasons. Because, um, I mean, of course, you know, the movie wasn't about the characters. It was about a marriage. It was basically you watching a marriage. No, you actually, you were watching a divorce, not the marriage fall apart. Um, So when the guys was getting railroaded, I was like, fuck, is this what's in store for me? So I think that's what got my attention. Um, I guess I'm, I, saying, I'm sorry. I just sorry to interrupt, but guys, uh, Akeen is recently separated and he's about yeah. to uh, go through this process. <laughs> so just to give you a heads up. 
<laughs> so I was like, did Nasser really think this through? Was no, he trying to get no. me to cut my wrists? No, no, no. So I, I hadn't <laughs> seen the film up until we decided to review it. I literally recommended it solely and blindly based on what my brother said. And he said, it's a good yeah. film. Watch it. I was like, if my brother says it, I'm gonna like, more often than not, we agree on if a film is good or bad. I was like, you know, I'll take his recommendation. I'll throw it up to you. Because a lot of the films that we've been reviewing, one of us had seen one, one of us had seen it before and we were getting the other person to watch it. And I just, you know, with extraction, it was we both watched it organically. I was like, all right, yeah. let's do it with this one. It's a relatively new film, a good cast. I think it won an Oscar or was nominated for an Oscar. And I was like... My brother said it was good. Let's give it a go. Let's see what happens. <laughs> yeah. So, um, I mean, okay. So, I, I think I, I think I've pretty much said most of the good things. If you can, I mean, nice things about the movie. If we can consider anything that I've said, nice. So the the acting was superb. Uh, yes. And Adam Driver, genuinely, like I didn't, I hadn't seen much of his work, if any of his work before, and he 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 was really good. He was really really good yeah um the film was very real so the the way they depicted the way lawyers work and act and manipulate yep. and everything based on my experience with lawyers and just for everybody to know i've been in, i've had some experience with lawyers <laughs> and they're they're very accurate um the way people fight i feel like they captured that well the way yeah. they'll they'll change points depending on whether or not they're winning or losing they'll if you hit me below the belt, I'll hit you below the belt. And then, you know, it just, the, the, the fight between um, the, the two main act, two main characters, I, I have a thing, I always forget the character names, between ScarJo and, and, and Adam, just phenomenally well written. And then I think I would say some of the directing choices were interesting. I don't know if it was good or bad, but if you notice that... Um, that fight scene where they're arguing in his new apartment, yeah, no music, no soundtrack, no music. It's silent. Oh. Okay. And I was like, this is it's weird. And a lot of the film had no score in the back. They used music, but they used it sparsely. And it just, it, I don't know if I, if I enjoyed it or if I didn't enjoy it, but it was interesting. And then if you also notice that a lot of the times the camera was on one person, no cuts, just long takes, they weren't showing you what was going on. Like, for example, when she was at her lawyer's office and she was going through the yeah. story of, of how she ended up loving him and then get leading to the divorce or whatever, the yeah. camera was on ScarJo, I want to say two, maybe three minutes. I, I obviously didn't have a timer or anything. But it was an extended period. And what it made me feel was that was, okay, now I'm in the lawyer's shoes and I'm listening. But at the same time, it detracted away from my ability to read emotions off the lawyer who's there listening as well. So yeah, you've given me sort of like a, a different point of view, but you've also eliminated some of the emotion that I could have taken off the lawyer. And now I don't know what the lawyer is thinking or feeling either. So the, the, the way they did that was a little, I mean, it was different. You know, when she was yeah. with Adam Driver again in, in his new apartment, he would talk, the camera would be just on him as opposed to, so, and when ScarJo talked, it was just on her. So we never really saw what the other party was feeling or, or thinking, at least, uh, you know, off facial expressions. But then what it did was it put us in that person's shoes to see what we would think and what we would feel. So I guess one of the, the if we're looking at the positives is it's, it's very real. It's very accurate. I mean, I, the way they fought, the way the process happened, the way they were somewhat naive going into it, thinking that it could just be, you know, amicable. Well, I shouldn't say that's naive because there are obviously some amicable divorces. Um, but it, it was just, it was a very real depiction. Like, I think a lot of people that got divorced could probably go, yeah, that's, that's pretty much how it happened. Or at least see that, oh yeah, this is perfectly believable. Um, my issue was it. Well, my issue with it was, it's so believable. I don't get what was going on. It's basically I just watched two people get divorced over two hours, and I'm like, okay, what's the point here? Um. Well, I mean, maybe it's one of those movies that's not necessarily like you take you take what you want out of it. I mean, look at what's that movie about? Uh, the boy. Um, is I've forgotten what what it's what it, is it? Boyhood. Did you ever see that movie? 
I, Wait, it's I basically you know. watching the kid grow up. Yeah, I heard I, they filmed it over uh, X amount of years and to make it. And yeah, other than that, at least for me, when I saw it, there was nothing else to take away from it except just that like wow this kid is actually growing up right before our eyes mm. um so that undertaking was to me was amazing but other yeah. than that like it was just it seemed like a a, a simple story uh, and maybe that maybe that helped maybe that helped the movie in this case sorry actually you you, you go i see you have a couple of things no that, no know, i was just well, gonna echo what you're saying i get what you're saying but i just don't get the point Okay, show us two people getting divorced. Cool. Yeah, maybe it's uh maybe it's uh one of those low key uh cautionary tales for people like yourselves, like you know, watch out. I mean, I guess <laughs> I mean, they started off the film with Scarjo and Adam basically saying what they loved about their partner. And as soon as the summary of what they loved about them ended, it was, oh, we're getting a divorce and we're at a mediator who asked us to write this. And that to yeah. me, it was a bit jarring, but it was interesting. I was like, oh, okay. But the problem was you spent five minutes telling us why we should love these characters and you didn't do that great a job. And I'll touch on that in a second, but you showed us five minutes of why we should like them. But then that's all it was. So now I'm not really invested in the characters that are getting divorced. So I'm not really sure what the what the point of the film was because now I'm watching two people who I don't care about get divorced. I mean, I think one takeaway might be that different people have different points of views on what happened. So basically, they they both experienced the exact same thing, right? And they both yeah they they both experienced the exact same um, actions in life. Like they both went through the same things, but with completely different perspectives. And then obviously, each person's perspective okay. was either amplified and or manipulated by their respective lawyer. So I guess it's kind of a commentary on on how people perceive things differently or react to things differently. But at the end of the day, it just, it fell flat. I mean, the actors tried hard, man, and they were good, but it was just the story and maybe partly the direction. I mean, maybe this is the reason why I'm saying the lack of music was maybe a negative because it didn't draw on my heartstrings in any way, shape or form when they were fighting or when they were crying or when this or that. It just, it felt like two strangers getting a divorce. I don't know the strangers. I'm not attached to the strangers. I'm not sure why I'm watching a two hour film about it. <laughs> Yeah, well, okay. So when it comes, so regarding the the lack of m music during the, I guess some of the really good, powerful, some of the scenes, yeah, some of the powerful scenes are the scenes that stood out. Um, I kind of like the idea that there was no score because in, in movies like, as in typical most movies, when they have scores in those scenes, it's for me it feels like you're beating me over the head like i get what's going on you don't the the score should should um i don't know why support comes to mind but basically it should elevate the scene like or you know at least lend to the scene if if it's obvious you know what the emotions are and what the words are being thrown back and forth and we can see the performance there's the score might not really be needed and in those scenes honestly i didn't feel like the scene um the scores were needed particularly the scene where you know she realizes oh fuck you know this shit is getting out of hand where she comes over to his place and she's like okay well i'm kind of running out of money and you know now yeah. our son's about to get involved and at that point so i felt just like him i was like fuck you like you know, you he got us tell into this, right? Right. Yeah, you got us into this. But um, also to go back to what you said about um the the opening scene. For some reason, I don't know if it's because I might have heard something about the movie. I mean, I didn't hear much about it in detail. But when they started talking, I was like, nah, this is just a setup. They. Oh, and it just seemed out of ca it just seemed unusual to say those kind of things to a person like it, it didn't sound like they were talking to people they were writing it down like who the fuck writes all those nice things down about a person if that they don't if they're not just trying to justify what you know 
what they like as a justify that they don't hate this person completely. So at that point, I knew that they were already in mediation. <laughs> I don't know if that's because you're cynical or is because you genuinely saw through it, but yeah. It, it's I'm, probably because I'm cynical. <laughs> before I forget, just because you did touch on it, which was like, uh, the, the, what she says, oh, my mother had to like mortgage the house or take a loan out against the house to pay for the lawyer. Like that just hit me right right here i was like yeah been there sister been there and, <laughs> and and when you say you know he was just basically like fuck you you got us into this i find it hilarious that in the end they settled on what they wanted in the beginning before approaching lawyers it just shows you like lawyers took them yeah. and then basically milked them for the money and then made their lives miserable for absolutely no fucking reason but like i said before very very accurate uh <laughs> <laughs> that scene where he's struggling to find a lawyer he likes and you know he's been counseled out of, of the the best attorneys and then he does eventually find one and they the one inaccuracy that i find is usually when you first meet a lawyer before they start interrupting you with what they're going to say is they usually try to get as much info out of you so that initial meeting with the with the hotshot attorney was a little off yeah but yeah usually i mean they talk to you they talk i mean they're formulating their game plan for court and everything. And they just sort of, you sort of have to pick it up along the way, at least from my experience. And uh, I like the way the older lawyer kept going, we're not going to court. We don't want to go to court. And then every time he suggested something, it was because it's going to look better at court. I was like, <laughs> yeah, I was just like, God damn it. Like that's accurate. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, sorry at the circle back to what you were saying about uh, the you know when they were describing why they liked each other I mean I felt like the, the exposition on screen was different to the narration being said so he there's a clip of her where she takes her top off right and it's at that yeah. moment where he goes oh she's so brave I'm like her taking her top off at a young age on a movie is not brave it's she's young she's in the movie she took her tits out like it's not brave like I don't know. I just felt like what they were describing and what they were showing was just a little bit of a juxtaposition. And then um, I didn't know that Adam's voice would come on and narrate. So I thought the beginning where he was, sorry, where ScarJo would then narrate for Adam. So when he was going on and on about how great Scarlett Johansson is, or her character is, I forget her name. I was like, something... I'm not sure where you're going with this. And then they tried to, he tried to make her seem like she was this perfect, lovely woman or whatever, or person or mother or whatever. And then all, all the, the video demonstration or the showing of it, she just looked like a very average chick. Like she was just okay. Mom. Okay. Actress. Okay. At everything. So it just, it felt, it felt inauthentic. But then again, now, like, looking back, now that the film is over, it's like, yeah, well, when you do describe somebody and why you fell in love with them, you do fluff it all up, right? Like, you know what I mean? Yeah. And then it's just, I, I like that they made her look, they made Scarlett Johansson, like, dress drab, and she had short hair, and she didn't play into her looks, you know what I mean? That was kind of <laughs> cool, but at the end of the day, it just goes back to, Two people who I don't give a shit about got divorced. Cool beans. Didn't need yeah. to sit through a two-hour video of it. <laughs> yeah, speaking of the exposition, um, I mean, of course, I'm sure there was a lot going on with the movie. To be fair to the movie, there was probably a lot going on that I didn't catch because I wasn't invested in it for any other... I mean, I could have been invested in watching the movie if, you know, maybe... I came to it at my own time, but the only major reason I stayed with it, or maybe that's even wrong. If I just watched the first 30 movies, first 30 minutes of the movie, or maybe the first how many minutes at my own time without having to review this, I would have turned it off. Um, So, yeah. So, I don't know. Maybe I need to watch it another day. Uh, Maybe I might... Maybe, sure, maybe no. it might, no, maybe, maybe it might, maybe at that point I might be like, oh, I'm mature now. The movie makes so much sense. It's the greatest movie ever. Yeah, that will happen. It but yeah, I time. just, I didn't care for it. So this, these are the few things that I picked up on. Um, the exposition by her mom was so annoying. Um, then where we, her mom, where, you know, we meet her mom for the first time. Her mom says something to her in the toilet. She says, 
even though I'm 64 and ha I know she was like talking about something and I caught this, even though I'm 64 and I have a dead gay husband, I was like, who the fuck talks like that? Right. Real, right. It was basically I, the mom just trying to throw in plot points. Yeah. Like to help us like, you know, Oh yeah, this is what's going on with me. And then, you know, I thought that the scene might have been funnier because then ScarJo says something afterwards, which is funny to me, but it would have hit home harder if her mom hadn't said that, where she was like, oh, didn't you walk in on dad blowing the porter? Exactly. So if she just admitted that first part, you could have gotten yeah. some comic relief in that part. Yeah. Yeah, like because her mom was, you know, basically, you know, t correcting her and telling her what she should do and all this crap. So it was like, that would have been so funny. She just said, hey, so we would have gotten the idea like, oh, her dad was, you know, bi or gay or whatever. And your mom is and her mom was full of shit. You know? Right, right. Just wrapped I, it all up. I, I forgot to comment on something when you said that uh, you felt like the lack of music, that music generally sometimes feels like you're being hit over the head with what you're supposed to feel or whatever. Yeah. Sorry to circle back to it, but I, I, I'd forgotten to. I remember watching a, an audition tape for a TV show scene. Like there was a, a scene and then obviously they were showing you the audition for it. And I remember the scene was being very powerful when I watched it in the production. And I remember watching the audition and it was, a, it was a girl and she was asking this guy to trust her. She was like a CIA agent or whatever. She goes, you know, I need you to trust me or whatever. And I remember mm -hmm. watching the audition tape and I remember thinking like, damn, she seems like very, like she's not really putting much into the audition. But when I remember watching the scene in the film, it being a powerful moment. And here's the thing. When actors don't give you much to act with, you need the music, you need the editing, you need the color grading, you need the shot right angle for the, for the shot. You need all of the elements to just sort of come together to elevate the scene. So when you're saying it felt like you're being hit over the head with it, maybe when you're being hit over the head with it, it's too much indeed. Sometimes I think it's just, they need that because this, the, the talent isn't where it's, it should be at. Or at least it makes it easier for the talent and the directors and everybody to, to get where they need to go. It's just, I mean, Adam Driver in that thing where he's about to cry and his lip and his chin, it wasn't even his lip, it starts to quiver and he's trying to like hold himself back. Shit was good. Like that dude looked like he was genuinely going to cry. And then... I don't know. Like it, it was weird. It was weird watching a film with with such little music. Like because I I generally one of my things about scores and soundtracks is I can tune them out. And if I can tune them out, why are they there? And here it was like, no, I'm not tuning them out. I'm just accustomed to them. And now I've now that I've seen the contrast of not having them there. I mean, I, I will say this, it made you focus solely and wholly on their acting ability, and Jesus Christ, I mean, they delivered. I mean, bravo indeed, but yeah. it was it was a different experience. Yeah, I mean, there were several scenes, or let me, maybe not several, but at least there were scenes that I noticed that stood out to me, like, for instance, um, the, I guess the scene before the, I've forgotten what she was called, the lady sent by the courts or by the state to monitor to right, watch right. him and his kid basically the whole day um, and like yeah that that was <laughs> hilarious especially when he was trying to show her the trick and then he's <laughs> <laughs> and then you know when idea. yeah basically when she's like oh yeah it, uh, i think i should go now and then you know basically has blood all over the place that was <laughs> that cracked me up that cracked me up um, yeah i mean yeah there were some really good scenes um Ooh. What cracked me up as well was like the ongoing theme of there's so much space in LA. And then when he goes, he can't walk in LA. <laughs> and then she goes, yeah, you can. We have all that space. She said it in such a deadpan, sarcastic way. I, I burst out into laughter. I'm like, yeah, there's space in LA to walk, but you, you don't walk unless you're going for a walk. You don't walk because the objective is to get from point A to point B. You don't do that in LA. And it was just like, okay, whoever wrote this film is an East Coaster and he just wanted to shit on LA hard. Especially like when they're in like the, 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 her, the lawyer's office and she's like, oh yeah, well, a kale salad for me or whatever. I'm like, oh, so fucking LA. 
<laughs> oh no, that that part kind of hurt because I mean, and that was one of those scenes that also stood out to me. That part kind of hurt because he's basically footing everyone's bill, yeah. and because yeah. he's footing his but his lawyer's bill, and then half of hers at least, yeah. and then they're having lunch, lunch, and then it's almost like he doesn't even matter at that point. They're just talking like. Did you see Chris Rock's joke about it in, in Tambourine, his latest special? So he had a joke about it where he goes, I was in a room and it was me, my, my soon-to-be ex-wife, her lawyer, and my lawyer. And they were arguing about how much she should get or whatever. And I was just sitting there and I just thought, like, huh, I'm in a room with three people who are all deciding how to spend my money. He's taking my money. Her <laughs> lawyer's taking my money. She's taking my money. And it, you know, it's, it is what it is, man. It just... And I like that the lawyer, the older lawyer, was like, look, the system is fucked up this way to protect certain people, and you just got to take your lumps. It was yeah. just, it's it, the, the one thing that I can't deny about the film is how goddamn real it was. Everything about it, I can't, I can't fault it and go, something was inaccurate or something was unreal or something didn't feel genuine. Yeah. I mean, if we're going to talk about the positives. Yeah, um, I mean, now that you're talking about it, I remembered another exposition that kind of pissed me off, but that's kind of besides the point. But anyway, I guess I might as well throw it in since we're recording, yeah, we're talking about it. Um, where we this is what people come to our chick. channel for, Akeem. Mundane yeah, absolutely. <laughs> all, all, observations. Two, all two people. All two people. Dude, our last <laughs> video got one view, and I know who gave us that view. It was me. No one watched about times video. Like it was, oh, <laughs> I guess. I, I guess that's supposed to teach us to teach us a thing or two. Uh, only watch movies that people care about. <laughs> And also, people might not care that much about us for now until we're yeah. big. Well, you guys you watch. Like, yeah. You wait. You wait. <laughs> <laughs> like speaking into the abyss. <laughs> anyway, but dude, no. A, no, a couple of days ago when I checked it, it had no views. And I was like, oh, shit. I didn't even watch the video. <laughs> you didn't. You didn't. And then I, sometimes it'll show like uh, when, when you open up the video in the search, it'll show like one or two views. And then when you click on it, the views at the counter at the bottom is, is higher. So when it said one view, I thought yeah. that was the case. And so I clicked on it and it was just like one view. I was like, God damn it. That was me. Because I usually, I'll immediately do the view when it's uploaded because I'll, I'll grab my phone and check that it works. I was like, okay. like no, no one watched our, our, our breakdown of About Time. I was like, man, maybe you should <laughs> keep picking the movies from now on. <laughs> no, I picked Platform and uh, Midsummer. Midsummer. So, hey, hey, yeah, so I, no, no, it's it's cool. Yeah, it's I've cool leveled the picked, playing uh, field with, with this one. I made it shit. <laughs> yeah. It's cool, bro. It's cool. It's, it's, it's good for me to watch movies that I'm I, and before I used to love dramatic movies, but I think I've I've become less emotional over the years. So mel- melodramatic movies don't. It takes it takes it takes a lot. It kind of it's it's a the, the, it's a genre that I can watch only maybe during certain moods. The drama has to be a part of an overarching plot for me. Like I watched two people get divorced for two hours, and it was bleh. If there was another story and this lawsuit, uh, so this divorce or whatever, seems to be complicating that other story, I might have cared more. Like if I cared about his play in New York, and then I'm like, if I was invested in that, and then seeing him being drawn to LA and not focusing on New York, maybe I would have cared. But there, it just when it's just drama for the sake of drama, it could go fuck itself. Yeah. Well, I guess. So One I interrupted issues. you, and you, you haven't gone back to the point. You were going to talk about some exposition that you – it was some oh. throwaway or whatever? Yeah, okay. So, yeah, another thought came in, but, yeah, let me finish that one. So, um, yeah, where he – we it was revealed to us who this lady was that he had slept with or whatever. Oh, right. And then the lady says something about, oh, I slept with you – I slept – we slept together or whatever while you were married, so I figured it would be okay for us to sleep together while – you know whatever because he had said you know oh i'm still married or something like that but mm-hmm. it was just the way it was worded on her part i was like people don't talk like that 
Like, yeah, you might yeah. instant wait, but you don't have to spell it out. We know you're spelling it out because you want to let the audience know, like, we kind of already figured when she said, oh, can I talk to you alone? I, I get what you're saying is they did enough in some ways and then went overboard with some of the dialogue. And I'll give you that. But at the same time, some people do talk like that. Some people are obnoxious. I mean, I sometimes spell things out because they need to be spelled out because it's just cathartic to, to just say it. And and for the most part, I mean, apart from a couple of instances that you've pointed out, the dialogue is pretty genuine. Like when they were fighting, the the stuff they said, the way they said it, the order in which it came up, I was like, God damn, that's like, that's exactly how, like, did the writer have this fight and then just transcribe it into a script or something? Like, it was just creepy real. Yeah, you know, it's, uh, it's personal. If it's not, <laughs> if it's not the the direct i mean like the actual writers whatever there's somebody who's uncredited at least Probably. that wrote yeah because it's it's you know it's personal you know it's personal one thing that was kind of strange to me because even afterwards i had to check to see who wrote it um for a movie that was supposed to show us whatever it was supposed to show us my take is that it was supposed to show us a divorce mm-hmm. it seemed more in line with the lady um like and when i say more in line it's probably because i'm not exactly sure how to word it it just seemed that she was painted in fair colors or whatever yes, no. yes, than no. him but but here okay so this is this is this is my uh this is why i think so i'll say why um so first of all um she from the from the beginning, she was basically faultless, right? <laughs> he was painted as this controlling dick and all these different things, and she just wanted her freedom and she wanted to live and she wanted to, you know, do the things that she wanted to do. And then they had to throw it in there that he had cheated. Of course, you know how it is. Like in 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 stories, sometimes you sometimes it helps. It, a lot of times it helps the audience to pick a side so you have to paint someone or cast someone in a certain light um and then she was also that this was another thing that actually even made it seem to me like yes they were obviously trying to do that the point where she meets this other guy from the audition or whatever or when she was holding that fake baby or whatever i knew she was going to bone that guy i will say but then okay sorry but but then when it finally gets to the point where they're supposed to bone, she says, oh, um, like he can only finger her because I guess she's still married or something like that, which drives home the point that she was still the same in a sense. It do, it, I, don't think, I don't think it really helped the story if we were supposed to feel sorry for the guy because by setting it up that way, even when he was being real roaded, I'm thinking from a lady's perspective, they'll probably be like, well, he kind of, he deserved it. I mean, he cheated, he did this, he did that, he did that. I mean, she's actually a good person. I see why you're saying all this because you're talking about the first part of the film and the first part of the film was a lot of ScarJo's point of view. But then when you look at the the rest of the film, you you start to see things from his side, right? He was like, no, 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 you, you, you wanted me, you, you, you were young, you wanted to get married, we got married, you were the, you know, uh, we didn't have sex for a year, and I didn't do anything, and I was loyal for God knows how long, I know how that sounds, like, oh, you want credit for not screwing other women while you were married to me, like, you don't get credit for that, but what I mean is, when you see the, the rest of the story from his perspective, you see that he he what she wasn't a saint and that she also had her her issues and that he was just human and he had he fucked up and stuff i don't think he was necessarily to paint her as a saint it was more of the order or the sequence of the point of view storytelling because at, at, at i mean at first yeah i was team scarjo then i'm like oh no adam adam's got a few points and it's a constant back and forth and you saw a lot of this during their fight um you saw you you saw it a lot throughout the script. It's just it went back and forth. I don't think it was necessarily meant one one side to be one sided. I 
disagree, of course. That's why we're having this discourse. Um, discourse they did if, cool so, so, <laughs> so um, where if we, when we go back to the show and tell, right? More of the showing, actually, I'll say more of the showing, most of the telling was Adam's a dick. And it kept driving home that idea that he's this, his this, is that, or whatever. Um, I mean, like, even mm. his responses, his responses to, you know, things that she was doing or whatever, like, who, you know, audience or, you know, people that are watching this, if you can, if if you have the stomach for it or whatever it is that you might need to power through the movie again, go watch it again. Um, and you you see my point. Like, basically he was set up in such a way that he came off as a dick. Now, I, I know the scene you're talking about when she came over and they had that conversation where they, you know, they had the conversation, I guess we wouldn't really call it a conversation, an argument in his apartment. That was just one scene. That was one scene where he explained his point of view. Uh, but, I mean, if you have most of the movie basically back in her, you know, and showing us that this guy is self-absorbed and all these things you don't really you don't really care about what was happening to him i mean she won ultimately yeah okay i i'll concede i'll concede she did win there was this proportionate amount of point of scarjo's point of view so i will give you that I don't, I think maybe when you're saying it was a chick who wrote it, even though it wasn't, or you were saying whomever, that, that part, that helped, made you think a chick wrote it. I get it. I get what you're saying. I don't necessarily agree, though. I just think it just happenstance. It's just, it was what it was. Because once you, there's certain things that you can't, I mean, you could say from her pure point of view or his point of view, but you can't be too repetitive, if, 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 if that makes sense. I just, uh, I think they gave you sufficient information and sufficient flaws in each character for you to be able to be on either character's team. You know, team. Um, but yeah, I'll concede. I think it was more Scarlet driven and uh, she did indeed win at the end if there is a win. Yeah. But, I think the I mean, only people course. who won at the end were the lawyers, in my opinion. Oh yeah, 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 absolutely, absolutely. Um, I I guess that was the point of view that I was, or that was the the frame from which I was I was looking at it. Like you know, her lawyer won, right, but right. you are right. Um, both lawyers won because Damn. there's this saying, and I think I, I I think I I think I shared yeah I think I shared this with you when I was like when I was uh, sharing some um, Nigerian props um, when two elephants fight. It's the grass that suffers. Yep. So, uh, so in a sense, we would think that it's um, Scar- it was ScarJo and Adam that or were the fighting, grass. right? But in this case, they were the grass. <laughs> yeah, lawyers were the elephants. Yeah. Hey man, I know the well, film has fans yeah. though, so I don't want to shit on it too hard. I, like, if you if you enjoyed the film and then you came into this review please please we're not assholes that just shit on everything even though that seems to be a trend <laughs> on video number eight of this podcast but, or video number nine of this podcast uh, we enjoy films we enjoy stories we just uh it's easier to talk about the bad than the good and again i can't say it enough the acting in this film was sublime major props to both scarjo and adam uh so <laughs> I'm sorry, bro. I, I'm laughing because I, I'm I, I'm just thinking about what you just said. It just seems like what the hell, like, bro. You can't stop the dislikes, okay? It's okay. Everyone's entitled to their opinions. No, Weird. no, no. I'm just. Yeah. <laughs> it's if I were a fan and I listened to people shit on something I enjoyed, it would hurt me. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like when 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 I like a film and then you tell me it's shit, it's like, oh, you 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 don't like it, but I loved it. Like you like you don't share the yeah. opinion that I have, and so I'm just <laughs> trying to give them a, like a silver lining to to cling on to is that we're I mean, Akeen and I are kind of haters in a way, so don't take us too seriously. That's what I mean. But I mean, disliking the video, phew, give us dislike, give us the view. I'll take the dislikes if someone watches, but. Uh, 
at this stage. We're barely we're podcasting into the abyss, my friend. I'm. Uh, I just want to clear this out. I don't know, clear it. This whatever. Sorry, the words are leaving me. It's kind of late, but I'm not a hater. I don't know about you, bro. I'm just. You're not a hater, really. I'm a. Con- really? I'm a consumer. I am a consumer, and I'm telling you how it is. Like, dude, movie you're not a hater? for me. <laughs> It had, it had, you know, it had a few things I could take away, but ultimately it, was it a wasn't film. a movie for me. Nope. I didn't say Part that. Shit. It's, you know, I'll people say shit. Uh, work hard. Oh, people work hard. Yeah. People, people, ever- people work hard on these movies. So I'm not, I'm not going to shit on it and say, oh, it was pointless. It was stupid. Or it was this. I did that once. And afterwards I was like, nah, that's. You know that's someone el- someone else's baby, so that's why I'm. I'm yeah, and to- some babies be ugly. I don't know what to tell you, man. Like, yeah, but you never tell the parents that they're ugly. You just yeah, be like, but then like, you know what? You, the- you gotta have a lot of personality. Guess what? The director is not listening to our review, so we're not telling him his baby's ugly. But everybody else that saw that baby, that baby was ugly. Like, <laughs> he was a- dude, I, I don't you know and I both you. said we would have tapped out about thirty minutes in had it not been for us needing to do this review. And if I knew you would want to tap out 30 minutes in and I was going to tap out 30 minutes in, I would have been like, cool, Akeen, I'm giving you a pass to tap out because I want to do the same. And this review would have been much shorter. Like, <laughs> true, 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 true. Uh, but, but hey, it's got us talking for probably over 30 minutes. So it, hey. It is what it is. Uh, tune in next week. Uh, there will be another film we haven't decided yet. It will be a Mr. Akin one day pick. So yes, it will not be anything romantically themed, uh, which after this is, you know, fine by me. Uh, we don't, again, don't know what film it is. Tune in. Oh, uh, I have one, I think. Oh, you, you, you do? Wait, have, yeah. is it something you've seen or something you plan to see? It's something I've seen. Okay. You might not like it, but I think that it's, it's deep in some ways and okay. of course, course you know those are my kind of movies so sure sure lay it on me lay it on Even to the that fans. sounded that sounded kind of messed up but anyway the name of the movie is swallow swallow don't laugh yeah don't don't laugh i didn't i know all i did was smile uh tune in next week for movie butters review of swallow uh there has to be a joke about the word <laughs> swallow and movie butter uh <laughs> there's uh, it's too late. It's, I'm too tired to come up with a joke, but uh, hopefully you enjoyed this review. Hopefully you're enjoying the channel. Uh, and yeah, see you next week. I, uh, <laughs> I swear, bro, I wanted to say, uh, oh yeah, it's about a girl. <laughs> <laughs> Shut up, dude. Just the... you, you, you and I really need to work on our closings to these podcasts because it always just sort of like devolves into like anarchy towards the last two minutes. <laughs> we need to get it together. All right, guys. Again, thanks for watching. Tune in. Oh, shit, week. it's not over. I thought it was. <laughs> what? I was trying to wrap it up again because you, you paid. All right, fuck it. It's over. See you. All right. <laughs> oh, no.